evening and welcome to Biz Roundup. I am Tamiru Nimsal and we here at TAR Television bring you a collection of business highlights. Let's have a look at the headlines. Government collects 55% of the defaulted taxes by the end of June. Colombo land prices see a notable increase. Ceylon tea increases in value across all elevations. News in detail. Headline inflation as measured by the E.O.N. EU change in the Colombo Consumer Price Index has decelerated sharply to just 0.5% in August, down from 2.4% in July. This significant slowdown aligns with the projections made by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Food inflation also saw a drop, easing to 0.8% in August from 1.5% the previous month. Similarly, non-food inflation took a sharp turn, declining to 0.4% in August from 2.8% in July. On a month-on-month -month basis, the CCPI recorded a decline of 1.85% in August, driven by price decreases across both food and non-food categories. Core inflation, which provides a clearer picture of the underlying inflation trends, also eased to 3.6% in August from 4.4% in July. Looking ahead, headline inflation is expected to remain well below the 5% target in the coming months. Over the medium term, inflation is projected to gradually stabilize around the targeted level, supported by appropriate policy measures. Sri Lanka's Inland Revenue Department has made significant progress successfully collecting 55% of the defaulted taxes by the end of June this year. This was announced by the Minister of Finance in a statement released to the media recently. According to the Finance Ministry, the IRD managed to collect 104 billion rupees of the 188 billion rupees in areas that are outside the appeals process, all within the first half of 2024. The ministry emphasized that Sri Lanka, being a democratic nation, upholds a system of checks and balances, ensuring that citizens can contest tax assessments through a judicial appeal process. While recognizing the need for a more efficient appeal process, the Treasury highlighted that reforms are already underway to streamline judicial procedures. The IRD's efforts have not gone unnoticed, as it exceeds its tax collection target for the second consecutive quarter, collecting 902 billion rupees in the first half of 2024. The land valuation indicator for Colombo District has shown a notable increase, rising by 6.9% year-on-year in the first half of 2024. This growth has been driven by substantial increases across all sub-indicators, residential, commercial and industrial, according to a statement released by the Central Bank. Both the residential and commercial LVI surged by 8.5%, highlighting strong demand in these sectors. The industrial LVI, while still positive, saw a more modest rise of 3.7%. On a semi-annual basis, the overall LVI and its sub-indicators exhibited stronger growth in the first half of 2024 compared to the latter half of 2023. However, it's worth noting that the industrial LVIs continue to lag behind its residential and commercial counterparts. The LVIs reflect the varying nature of land use, with separate sub-indicators for residential, commercial and industrial lands. These sub-indicators are calculated based on the average per perch bare land price within each DS division, with the overall LVI being a simple average of these sub-indicators. A special meeting to appraise members of parliament on the duties and responsibilities of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka was held in parliament recently. The session was chaired by Speaker Mahinde Apabe Vardhanu and Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virusinghu, members of the CBS Governing Board and the Monetary Policy Board. This meeting was held as part of the legal mandate requiring parliament or a committee to inquire into the Central Bank's activities every four months as stipulated in the Central Bank of Sri Lanka Act of 2023. During the meeting, Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe highlighted several key achievements, including reducing inflation to 5% and lowering the policy interest rate. Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe credited the new Central Bank Act and the recently reduced banking regulations as instrumental in achieving considerable economic stability. The Governor also detailed the establishment of a financial system monitoring committee to ensure the stability in banking, non-banking financial institutions, the stock market and the insurance sector. Stay tuned. We will return out the short commercial break.
Welcome back after the break. The 32nd Annual General Meeting of the Sri Lanka Pakistan Business Council was held in Colombo recently. The event was graced by High Commissioner of Pakistan in Sri Lanka, Major General Fahim Al Aziz, and High Commissioner of Sri Lanka in Pakistan, Admiral Ravindra Sir Jigunaratne. During the meeting, Indra Kaushal Rajapaksha was re-elected as President of the SLPBC for the 2024-2025 term. The vice presidents elected include Vasanth De Silva and Gayan Madhu Maharaji. S. Devanayagam will continue to serve as the immediate past president. Both high commissioners addressed the gathering, reiterating their commitment to facilitating trade, investment and tourism between the two countries. The SLPBC reiterated efforts to building stronger industrial engagements, exploring new business opportunities and fostering greater collaborations to unlock the combined potential of Sri Lanka and Pakistan. One of the key components of this strategy includes facilitating on arrival visa services for Pakistani visitors further strengthening ties between the two nations. The Sri Lankan tea industry saw an increase in value across all elevations despite a moderate level of production during the first half of the year. According to the biannual tea review released by Forbes and Voku recently, revenue from tea exports for the first quarter of 2024 reached over 110 billion rupees. The second quarter also saw a significant boost in auction prices with an approximate 16% increase resulting in a sale average of over 1200 rupees compared to slightly over 1000 rupees in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. This rise in auction prices has been attributed to lower to moderate tea production during the period under review. Notably, the revenue earnings for the second quarter of 2024 surged to 110.04 billion rupees, a substantial increase from the 99.7 billion rupees recorded in the same quarter last year. However, the report also highlights some challenges, particularly concerning key markets like Russia and Turkey. Russia, the world's largest importer, may face constrained demand due to ongoing sanctions. Meanwhile, Turkey, accounting for 5 to 6% of global tea consumption, remains a significant player in the Sri Lankan tea market. The report suggests that consumers are increasingly seeking teas that are ethically sourced, free from harmful chemicals and packaged in environmentally friendly materials. While global demand for black tea is expected to continue rising, the demand for green and organic teas with health benefits is likely to outpace that of black tea in the long term. The Witch Voyages Foundation Vegan Travel Asia, in collaboration with Sri Lanka Tourism, offering a comprehensive plant-based culinary workshop tailored specifically for Sri Lanka. This workshop, which is being conducted in both Sinhala and English, is set to take place on the 6th and 7th of September at Ranbath Organic from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. A press conference to make this announcement was held in Colombo earlier this week. Representatives from the Biodiversity Project, Clean Ocean Force Sri Lanka and Earth Lanka Youth Network will be present to support this transformative event. The workshop is open to the public, including chefs, business owners and individuals interested in the plant-based industry. Additionally, there will be closed workshops for schools and universities. Remarkably, the event is free of charge for hospitality industry professionals, providing them with the opportunity to learn about the latest culinary trends and gain practical skills that can significantly advance their careers. In addition to the knowledge and skills gained, participants will receive international certification in sustainability practices for the boosting their professional credentials. Plant-based industry is growing all around the world and there are many factors behind it. First, people are getting aware that animal agriculture is the biggest problem for climate change. Second, some people are turning plant-based or we can say vegan uh, because of ethical choices, uh, for ethical reason. And some are turning vegan or plant-based for health reasons. So now we see the plant-based market is growing around 12% every year annually. Um, and also it is estimated that by 2030, it will be $162 billion in industry. So we need to get us up to date and uh, how tourism can benefit out of it. Stay tuned. We will return after this short commercial break. Welcome back after the break. The Ceylon Chamber of Coconut Industries has raised alarms regarding Sri Lanka's coconut supply, 
warning that current production levels are insufficient to meet both domestic consumption and increasing export demands. Despite coconuts being cultivated on 1.1 million acres of land and yielding around 3 billion coconuts annually, the sector is facing significant challenges. The newly inaugurated Ceylon Chamber of Coconut Industries raised this alarm at a press conference held in Colombo last week. The first president of the CCCI, Jayanta Samarakun, highlighted the urgent need to enhance productivity, replant unproductive lands and expand cultivation in suitable areas. He pointed out that Sri Lanka's current yield of 2,750 coconuts per acre lags behind India's more than 6,000 coconuts per acre, emphasizing the importance of improving yield in a country with limited arable land. Despite the presence of three major government bodies, the Coconut Development Authority, Coconut Cultivation Board and Coconut Research Institute, no substantial progress has been made in increasing productivity. To address this issue, the CCCI is seeking funds to implement a geographic information system project to gather critical data for formulating a national plan for the industry. The Chamber also stressed the importance of collaboration between the government and the private sector to support the livelihoods of approximately 800,000 coconut growing families most of whom own less than 5 acres of land, which accounts for 80% of Sri Lanka's coconut land. CCI's first general secretary, Ranil Disaram, cautioned that if these challenges are not addressed, coconut prices could rise to 270 rupees per coconut, further straining the industry and consumers. The Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka has acquired a cutting-edge market surveillance system from Nasdaq, a global leader in financial technology. This acquisition marks a significant step in the CC's ongoing efforts to ensure a fair, transparent and efficient securities market in the country. The agreement between the CC and Nasdaq was signed in Colombo recently. The new system, renowned for its advanced market monitoring and regulatory compliance capabilities, is expected to undergo rigorous testing and be fully operational within five months. Nasdaq surveillance platform is celebrated globally for its ability to detect and respond to market anomalies, potential fraud and other forms of manipulation. The system's sophisticated algorithms, customizable alert and report generating capabilities and real-time data analytics will empower the SEC to proactively safeguard market participants, thereby enhancing the stability and credibility of Sri Lanka's capital market. Notably, the platform's scalability and integration of AI and machine learning make it well-suited to handle increasing market activity and data volumes. The Sri Lankan ambassador to the Kingdom of Jordan, Priyangika Vijay Gunasekaru, recently visited the Zarka Chamber of Commerce to discuss trade and economic cooperation between Sri Lanka and Jordan. During the meeting, Ambassador Vijay Gunasekaru and Zarka Chamber Chairman Hussein Shraim reviewed the existing trade and economic ties between the two nations. The discussion centered on enhancing trade, tourism and investment opportunities with both sides expressing a strong commitment to deepening bilateral relations. Chairman Shreem highlighted the importance of strengthening tourism cooperation between the two countries. He suggested linking tourists with travel companies and agents in both Sri Lanka and Jordan to boost bilateral tourism. Ambassador Vijay Gunasekara invited Jordanian businessmen to invest in Colombo's port city, leveraging Sri Lanka's favourable business environment. Ambassador Vijay Gunasekara also expressed a desire to increase the volume of trade exchange between the two countries. She encouraged Jordanian companies to explore opportunities to export their renowned olive oil and dead sea salt products in Sri Lanka. Additionally, she noted the potential benefits of deploying more skilled Sri Lankan workers in Jordan's industrial cities. With that, we wind up for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. See you tomorrow with State of Business at 7.45pm. Take care and good night.